Hello everybody, Doug here with Alea, and we have a special guest on this edition, our very close friend, Winslow Vale Brokaw, who lives in Sun Valley, Idaho. And she wrote us the other day with a really interesting problem that we want to address. So Winslow, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and what the problem is, and then we will start thinking about how to address it. So my name is Winslow and I live in Idaho and I work with, I run my own tutoring business and also run creative groups with six and seven year olds. And in addition to that, I have a fairy mail business where every week the fairies and I mail a letter to subscribers and those letters have the really gentle and positive and they encourage self-worth and um, creativity and magic and joy and among many other things. And so I am coming up against this challenge or just kind of um, discussion between the kids and the parents where the the, the seven, six and seven year olds are kind of wondering, they love the fairy mail and that's a part of each group every week, but they're kind of wondering what's, is magic real? Are fairies real? Um, like is, what's the truth? And then also that the parents are feeling, wondering to what age, to what extent should their children believe in other realms, having, you know, cultivate their imagination and so parents are coming to me and also wondering how to respond when the kids ask, are fairies real? Are, is magic real? Is the Easter Bunny real? And so that is the, the dilemma. All right. So what we're going to do is read, Alea is going to read one of Winslow's fairy letters so that you can get the sense of what Winslow is talking about, and then we will jump in and answer the question. And we've been giving this some thought. We got the we got a, a, an email from Winslow three or four or five days ago, and we've been pondering this ever since. So, and we thought it would be great to do a session on this, because who doesn't want to believe in fairies and be creative and believe in higher realms and tap right, into the magic tap into the magic tap and the magic right e emmy is our um eight month old puppy and emmy is a subscriber to fairy mail and so every week when we get the fairy mail in the mail um we sit down and we read emmy uh the letter from the fairies this one is particularly a favorite of of ours and of emmy's dear fairy friends when you're playing outside this week pause and watch how nature moves Watch how the birds swoop and soar. Watch how fire flickers. Watch the clouds and the wind and the trees. Even when nature is still, there's movement. We love to play with the elements of nature, earth, air, fire, wind, water, wood and metal. All of these elements are our friends. What would it be like to be your favorite element? Use your imagination. It's also fun to think about your favorite animal or magical being and how it moves. Nature is magical, just like you. Love the fairies. I think it's beautiful, Winslow. Thank, <laughs> thank you. We really love getting those postcards every week. Oh. All right, Alea. I'm, I'm going to have you actually talk a little bit about why the parents are so anxious. I was going to suggest that I do that. Why the children are so anxious and wanting to know, are fairies real? Because they're seeing an adult that is presenting this material, tuning into the fairies, writing the letters for the fairies, bringing it into the physical realm, and why that triggers so much anxiety for the parents and for the children. Well, for the parents, of course, when they were children, they were cr probably crushed their creativity was crushed by their parents and by society and culture and our educational system and everything everything that we live in, in in modern society is designed to crush creativity to crush imagination to crush a free spirits our society is designed to 
to to build conformists, people who socially conform to the rules. And our society also forces us to conform to the myth of rationality, which is to say what, what makes us human is our, is our ability to be rational. And we know from neuroscience that that's absolutely false. Philosophers and theologians for 4,000 years have been lying to us. We are not rational beings. We are highly emotional beings. And emotions are not, or I can give you the scientific discussion, but we're not going to go there. Emotions are energy in motion. So it's an energy. And that we're energetic beings, biologically, as well as physically and spiritually. So the, so the challenge we have are parents who are anywhere between their late 20s and early 30s dealing with their six and seven year olds and wanting the best for their children, but also under enormous peer pressure from their educators in the primary schools, from their peer fa peers and other families, friends that they, and that they associate with, from their own parents, to start toughening up their kids because it's a tough, mean world out there and believing in fairies and believing in Santa Claus and believing in the Easter Bunny and believing in the, the higher energy fields is, is wrong because it's not real and you got to get real and you got to toughen up because it's a tough, mean world out there. And so right around 7, 8, 9, 10 is when many parents start crushing the creative spirit out of their children because they're under intense peer pressure to do that. And that's why we see kids by the time they're 11, 12, 13, they're entering puberty. They are, they're completely crushed in terms and of- And angry. And angry and depressed. <laughs> uh, Suicid and suicidal sometimes. Sometimes suicidal. In worst case scenarios. And, and emotionally and emotionally repressed and, and are not feeling emotionally safe because their parents meaning well, but not knowing what they're doing actually are abusing their children. And so the answer to the six-year-old, are fairies real? Is a, it's a sophisticated, nuanced answer because you have to explain it at the level of a six-year-old's cognitive ability. The truth is actually much more complex than a six-year-old can comprehend, but you've got to explain, you've got to explain it to the six-year-old in a way that the six-year-old will get it and also in a way that is, is truthful, but at a level that a, that, a, that a child can 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 get without without perpetrating a fantasy for example that that would not be true and at the same time you have to get parents who are have been crushed themselves and are probably profoundly unhappy in their in themselves and in their lives um, to see if they can understand the inner spark of creativity and imagination that exists within them that maybe they can open up and become lighter and freer and more have more fun and lighthearted and whimsical in terms of and instead of just looking at life as being a grind and you know you're working paycheck to paycheck trying to survive which is true but but, it, but these parents that are subscribing to fairy mail probably already have that door cracked open probably. want want to believe but now are coming up against all of these cognitive biases. So, yeah, so, well, well, and we don't need to go into all those cognitive biases right now, but just say there's just a lot of, there's a lot of distortions in decision-making and, and judgments they make that get in the way of them accepting the fact that there are alternate realities that uh, can really help spark the creativity and imagination of their children. That, that Winslow starts with their fairy letters. So, Alea, what's your take on it? So, to cut to the chase, the parent is asked by the child, are fairies real? And the parent could actually hold the sage stance. And the sage never answers a question, but asks a question that helps whoever's asking the question to drop deep into their own inner wisdom. A six-year-old has their own wisdom, their own knowing at a deep soul level. And so one approach that the parents could take when asked, are fairies real? Is Santa real? Is the Easter bunny real? Is you, the parent would say, well, if the Easter bunny, fairies, Santa, the magical realms, if those were real, how would you then feel? What do you feel inside yourself if you just imagine that that's real? For real, 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 real. 
the child's probably going to say, well, I feel happy, I feel light, I feel joyous, I feel connected, in their own words, the essence of that. And then the parent could say, and if they're not real, how do you feel inside yourself? Kind of sad, a little flat, a little depressed, some grief, whatever words the child is going to use to explain those emotions. And I'm just assuming that that might be the reaction. So we can approach it from, if it were real, how does it make you feel? If it isn't real, how does that make you feel? And then you ask the next question, and which one serves you? Whether it's real or not real, what makes you feel more supported inside, more centered inside, more connected inside? Again, you have to use the words that the six-year-old is going to get. And then what you're doing is you're coaching the child to be discerning about their choice and their awareness. Because where they hold their awareness creates a particular choice that could be supportive or not supportive, but you're holding the container of, okay, if you don't want to believe that they're real and that doesn't feel light and joyful and happy inside, and you choose to be in that energy, okay, how does that serve you? Is that, is that going to work for you? Or what do you really need at this time? So again, you're training, coaching them to link their beliefs with their needs in the moment. The world is kind, can be a little bit scary. When we go to school, we have the bullies and we have the challenges and the confusion. Does it actually serve you to believe in this other realm with these beings that are of love and light? Does that feel supportive? And then you're pointing the child to start making choices to, connecting, to connect with things that are supportive for themselves. It doesn't matter if other, believe, other, other people believe it or not. So that's one approach. And then the other conversation that we could have with the parents is that quantum physics, mystics, science, spiritual traditions have all talked about a multi-dimensional reality. We do not just exist in the physical dimension. There are things that are unseen that we might not be able to scientifically prove, although quantum physics has talked about these other dimensional realities where there is energy, there is consciousness, there is vibration. And in all of the work that I've done over 30 years or longer is I have realized like, wow, we live in a multidimensional reality. And so the parent could start opening that door of, well, what if we taught our children how to use these other dimensions to support them and help them grow and evolve and embody particular qualities that are really empowering and connect in with a consciousness in another dimension that is really supportive and really safe and really encouraging. And so to have a conscious awareness of a multidimensional reality and be coached on how to use these other dimensions in a really empowering way, what an incredible skill set. So you're essentially helping a child grow up to be a magical being instead of a muggle who lives on one floor. And so the choice is, do you want to live on one floor, a, a really flat reality, or do you want to start using your conscious awareness to tap into other dimensions, coaching your child on tuning into the harmonic dimensions that can support your child and can support you in your awakening process, in your betterment process, and becoming the best being that you can be connecting with consciousness in these other realms that are pure, that are light, that are joyous, that are sweet, that are connected, and opening those lines of communication so that we don't feel so alone here in this world. I like that. I, I was on a podcast earlier today, and the podcast host said something that I thought was so cool that's germane to this. He said, you know, I look at the uni universal force. You can call it God or whatever you want to call it. And he said, what I think we are as human beings, we're simply the universe experiencing itself or this universal force experiencing itself. And we come into, come into existence as sentient beings and we experience everything that we experience. And then, and then we go back into the force and we take all of our experience with us. And this, it's a constant evolutionary process of experiencing ourselves in this, in this dimension and then taking it back everything we've learned and everything we've experienced into another dimension and allowing the universal force to continue to grow and manifest. I thought that was a pretty cool way of thinking about what life is all about and what the universe is all about. And 
you know, when you, when you look at it that way, what's a fairy? A fairy is just, just a manifestation of universal force at a level that maybe maybe we can detect and maybe we can't detect. And But who are we to say that they don't exist? You know, we don't know. And the, and the fact that you can't prove something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means you can't. All you can say is that there's just no proof of this. But that doesn't lead us to the conclusion that it doesn't exist. It's just that we can't perceive it. And awareness. Awareness. Mm -hmm. And as a person who's, who's experienced a lot of my life, I've seen things that science can't explain. I've done things that science can't explain. And that has opened up my heart and my mind to vast possibilities that other people have never experienced. And so I am not quick to say fairies don't exist. Even though you've or the spirit them. of Santa Claus <laughs> or this. I mean, in the other way, that, and that gets me to one other thing you said, Alay, when you're having questions, you say, well, if, if, if Santa Claus is an energy, maybe this would be a conversation for a little older child, but if Santa Claus was an energy, what is the energy that Santa Claus represents? What is the energy that the Easter Bunny represents? And we, we, we put it into prosaic terms, an old fat guy in a red suit jumping down a chimney or a big tall bunny with a bunch of chocolate Easter eggs in the basket running around. We put it into prosaic terms so we can better understand it. But, but what really, they're metaphors. And what are they metaphors for? What's the energy that they represent? And is that energy real or not? And the truth is that the energy is very real. And we just describe it in fairly sim simple metaphors so we can grasp it easier. So are they real? In many senses of the word, yes, they are. Are they real in the sense that they're physical beings that walk on the planet? No, probably not, but that's not the point. The point is, the point is that they are metaphorical descriptions of energies that we all embrace and, and um, want to have around us because it's so positive. So Winslow, does that help you? That's a pretty deep, <laughs> Alea and Doug, <laughs> examination of the question, are fairies real? What did you take from that? I, it's so helpful and I do love it because I love that then it's allowing the children to make a decision based on what serves them. And it's also so cool to think if their spark and that magic and that creativity and their imagination isn't crushed, then there's so much, there's, there's endless possibilities for so many kids. And so I love how it's, it doesn't have to be about just like the fairies, but it's really about having the parents realize that it's allowing them to be in their imagination and their magic and their spark and to keep that alive and that that then allows them to be balanced, well-rounded, successful humans in the way that they choose. So thank you so much. And tell us your website where people can find out more about fairy letters and the work of Winslow Vale. Yeah, so my fairy mail, you can go to Winslow Vale, W-I-N-S-L-O-W, Vale, V-A-I-L dot com. And then there is a fairy mail page on that website for subscriptions. And we send uh, weekly letters to your doorstep. And if people happen to make it to Sun Valley, where you reside you in Ketchum, um, they can hire you to tutor their kids. Exactly, or on Zoom. Or on Zoom, you do Zoom tutoring too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Winslow. Great work. All right, we'll see you all next time. Doug Olay and Winslow here signing off. Good night.